Hello, thank you for joining me for our midweek Lenten services. I'm Reverend Marianna McCarr. I'm the minister at First Presbyterian Church in Brockville, and I invite you to join me for this uh, worship service for the sixth week of Lent, March 29th, 2023. We will enjoy a time of reflection, music, scripture, and prayer. So please come and join me as we journey through, continue our journey through Lent. We'll begin with the call to worship. Unless our worship is genuine, it is a waste of time. Out of the depths we cry to you, O oh God, Lord, hear our voices. Remember the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who thought he was rich, but for our sakes became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. Let God's people put all their hope in the Lord, for with God there is faithful love, and with the Lord is plenteousness and redemption. Let us worship in sincerity and truth. And let us now come to God with our prayer of adoration. Living and faithful spirit, the God in whom we live and move and have our being, the God who is made known in Christ Jesus, bless us one and all as we wait on you this day. Please remove from our minds and our hearts whatever impediments hinder worship or dampen our joy. Increase with in us that holy longing for closeness, which can open our lives to fuller delight and to a deeper commitment. May our hymns and prayers, our searching thoughts, and our hearing of the scriptures bring us closer to you during this Lenten season. By you, with you, and for you, may our lives publish your praise in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. And now let us come to God with our confession. O oh Lord, there are times when we are so lost, we forget to look to you. Forgive us when we turn away from your love. Forgive us when we doubt our own feelings and the feelings of others. Forgive us when we forget that your Holy Spirit dwells within us. Help us to see your love and your presence in our lives. Help us to trust you no matter what life may bring, and help us to follow you faithfully. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we no longer need to live as slaves to our sinful natures. Sin has no claim on us anymore because through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have put to death our old ways of acting and thinking. We have been given new life as God's own children. So be at peace. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our scripture reading for today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8 verses 6 through 11, and this translation is from the New International Version of the Bible. Let us hear the word of God. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, and for the word of God around us, thanks be to God. The miracle of salvation in Christ is beyond human comprehension when it is viewed from the perspective of redeeming our fallen human natures. While the act of faith is so simple in terms of believing in Christ, regeneration of our Holy, by the Holy Spirit is nothing less than a miracle. In our text today, Paul describes how our spiritual maturity, after an individual steps into the life-giving experience of salvation by grace and how that maturity grows. Paul describes our fallen human nature in these verses. The mind or thinking of human sinful nature is death, death, which was introduced in God's creation through the disobedience of Adam and Eve. The mindset of our sinful human nature 
is opposed to God's nature and ways. Paul says that those living under the control of sinful human nature cannot please God. Around us each day are news stories giving graphic details of extreme examples of humanity's fallenness. The brutality of the war in Ukraine, the persecution of innocent people because of their skin color and beliefs, the marginalization of people just because of who they are. These accounts bring a dark picture, a prospect for the future of humanity. But in contrast to this dark picture, Paul tells us, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. There is more to this story than just our sinful human nature. For persons who have the spirit of God in them, that is, those who have been restored by grace through faith, and that faith itself is a gift of the spirit. The picture is very different. For us as believers, there is an ongoing process in which the old human nature, our old human nature, is being destroyed. Paul declares that the power of sin in our bodies is dead, but we are spiritually arrive, alive because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. This redemption of our natures, this transformation of our spiritual character, signifies not only the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, but also our identity as followers of Jesus. You and me, we are the possession of Christ, bought with his sacrifice, which we will remember in two weeks on Good Friday. The sense of alienation and isolation, which seems so present, prevalent, has been with the humans, us as humans since the fall of Adam and Eve, and is really even more glaringly obvious in our society today. The purpose of redemption through Jesus was to return humanity to its rightful place in relationship with its creator. The last verse of our text today reminds us of the Holy Spirit's miracle of redemption in the resurrection. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in each and every one of us. And the Holy Spirit not only rejuvenates us, but resurrects us. As we continue through the season of Lent and approach Holy Week, the promise of that miracle in the life of Christians is as sure as Jesus' resurrection. Amen. And now let us come to God with our prayers, prayers for ourselves, prayers for each other, and prayers for our world. God of valley and grave, we come before you today and pray for your life-giving presence in places that seem dry and dead. There are those places we know from the news, Ukraine, Turkey, Syria, Malawi, Israel, Palestine, places where war, natural disaster, and human greed has left dead bodies and broken lives behind. Bring the fullness of your life to these places and give them hope that what is happening now is not your will for creation. And then there are the places that don't make the news, but we know so well because they are close to us. We pray for those in our community and our nation who are struggling with illness in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who lack adequate shelter, food, and clothing. We pray for those oppressed by injustice, discrimination, and hatred simply because of who they are. We pray for an end to all those things that rob your people of life, that rob your people of breath, that rob your people of wholeness. And we hope. We hope for the promise of the morning, the time when a new light will break on the horizon, hinting at the glory of your presence in our midst. We hope for the promise of the resurrection, of the life that is ours, even when we don't see it fully. Give us the courage to live the reality of the resurrection. Give us the courage to be witnesses to new life in Christ. Give us the courage to step into your created world with your words of prophecy, with the courage to believe that you call us and you guide us so that bones, dry, dead bones may live and your people may breathe. In your name we pray in the way Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, friends, go out into the world, knowing that we are a people loved by God, and we are called to live as signs of that love. We are a people that are blessed with hope, and we will live in the light of this hope. And may the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the courage of the Spirit strengthen our faith and set us loose in this world to share God's love with all. Amen and amen. <laughs>